Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Karthik Pattaje from the University of Illinois. I'm a PhD student advised by uh, Professor David Lang. The topic of my presentation today is 3D printing with concrete development of a vibrating nozzle for material extrusion. There is a need for a certain kind of rheological duality when you are 3D printing. You want a material which can flow through the printer and exit the nozzle, but then you also want it to be a solid so that it retains its shape and can take the weight of layers placed on it subsequently. So how do you deal with this duality? Thankfully, concrete is a yield stress fluid where the stress acting on the material decides its state. If the stress is greater than its yield strength, it can behave like a fluid and can also behave like a solid if the stress acting on it is less than its yield strength. So we have them need for duality and we have a material which can behave in two different ways. How do we get between these two? With concrete, we have been doing it for a long time. We have been vibrating concrete, not for 3D printing, but in general for decades now. So you vibrate it, instantly it changes its yield stress, behaves like a fluid and you don't vibrate it like this person here, you can stand on it. So it is stiff enough to take the load. So this is a known property of granular fluids, not just concrete, all granular fluids react to vibration. And there is experimental evidence uh, for this. At very low shear rates, uh, vibration can overcome the yield stress of concrete and the yield stress is seemingly eliminated. You turn vibration off and it instantly regains its yield stress. Uh, and this, like I was saying, is a known property of granular fluids. There's a model by Hannerton et al. who uh, explained the uh, rheology of vibrated granular suspensions and they talk about uh, a contact uh, chain or a force chain where grains which make up part of the system take up most of the loads or stresses acting on it. And in concrete, that, that's the aggregates, the coarse aggregates especially. They form an aggregate skeleton, a chain, where the contact points can take all the stresses acting on it. When you vibrate concrete, these contact chains, the force chains are broken, the aggregate contact points come apart and it behaves like a fluid. So there is some benefit to actually having coarse aggregate in your 3D printable concrete because green strength, the early age strength is higher. Long term, you have better durability we all know the benefits of having coarse aggregates. So 3D printing typically is done with cement paste or cement mortars. I'm saying let's have coarse aggregate. You get better durability, better dimensional stability, shrinkage resistance, free stuff, all the good stuff that we want in looking at concrete in the long term. And I guess most importantly for this to take off the cost, you have a cheap volumetric filler aggregates instead of cement paste, which can make this an expensive material. But if this is the case, why aren't people already printing with a lot of coarse aggregate in their mixes? Because there are some issues with it, especially with extrudability. You can have issues getting the material to flow through your printer or exit the nozzle, and even the surface finish. But there have been successful 3D printing with concrete already. For example, this is Army Corps of Engineers in Champaign, Illinois. They've already printed with 3 8 aggregates. So I wanted to 3D print with the aggregates using vibration. So my idea was, let's have no slump or very low slump concrete within the printer, then vibrate it as necessary to get it to extrude. To uh, characterize this, I wanted to study the rheology of concrete during vibration. How do we do that? Because rheometers are generally not meant to be vibrated. So what I did was I took an ICAR rheometer placed it on a vibration table, suspended the torque meter, which records the readings slightly to reduce the vibration noise. The way rheometers work, for those of you who don't know, is you suspend a vane within the material and rotate it at a constant speed. The torque necessary to maintain this constant speed can be related to the yield stress of the material. Now, I needed an experimental protocol which mimics 3D printing. I came up with this protocol where I measure the yield stress of concrete at 15 minutes. That's roughly the time it takes to batch, put it into the 3D printer and measure the yield stress. 
let's say I've placed my first layer down at 15th minute, that's the yield source. The nozzle goes around the print path for the first layer. I'm assuming it takes five minutes, comes back to the same spot, the original spot. Now let's see if that material is ready to take more weight, right? So in five minutes, cement hydration is going on, the yield stress goes up. It's not being disturbed, so it goes up. So, okay, so now let's say that is sufficient to take more weight. So I'm vibrating my nozzle, the yield stress drops, so it should be flowing out. And the second layer is now sitting on the first layer and the nozzle continues to move. Let's see if the second layer is stiff enough to stand on its own. The yield stress has recovered. The nozzle goes around, comes back to the same spot, ready to place the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. The layers keep piling up. So that was my experimental protocol. Next, my basic model that I was working with said, you need aggregates, the contact chain, to give you a lot of yield stress. So I started with the cement paste mix. Uh, my mixture IDs, W1, water cement ratio of 0.4, P of 100% volume of my mix was paste. So I started with this. Then I reduced my paste content. Now I have 15% aggregates, which I tested in three different proportions, either completely sand, mixture of sand and 3 8 limestones, or a weird completely coarse aggregate mix. I was looking at the packing of the aggregates and how that influences. I did this for various paste levels, kept reducing the paste, increasing aggregates. And then finally, I reached the realm of conventional concrete, 40% cement paste, 60% aggregates. And this is, I put it through my experimental protocol. These are the results. So this is just cement paste, yield stress of about 150 to 250. When you vibrate it, comes down to about 100 Pascal, recovers when you stop vibration, so on. Okay, each line color will have the same amount of paste. There's gonna be a lot of uh, lines coming up in this plot. Now, I have 85% paste and 15% aggregates. You don't see a big difference from pure cement paste because the aggregates are still not yet contact with, in contact with each other. The force chain is not really forming. Reduce paste, increase aggregates again. Keep doing it. And the red line, basically I created a rainbow from violet, go through the rainbow, reach red, and you see the red ones have very high yield stress. In fact, they're an order of magnitude greater than just cement paste. So to 3D print, you want high yield stress when it is sitting by itself after you have 3D printed. And during 3D printing, you want it to have really low yield stress, which vibration can achieve in most cases. Now, I'm gonna call all my 20 minute uh, values as pre-vibration here on and the first vibration at around 21 minutes as my during vibration values. So I replotted that data with total aggregate content on my x-axis. You'll see there's an exponential increase with uh, increase in aggregate content. In fact, at 60% aggregate, you see two red points which weren't on my previous graph because without vibration, I couldn't even test them in my rheometer. They were way too stiff. But during vibration, they're still stronger than some of my other concrete when not being vibrated. So not all concrete can be vibrated at a given energy and be expected to print. So I need to establish some kind of uh, boundary conditions to say, hey, these mixes can be printed using this idea. So moving forward, I actually wanted to 3D print something. So back home in Illinois, we have this uh, 3D printer, which is meant for clay, paste, and mortar, and not really for concrete because very few crazy people like me have started doing it already, I guess. So I had to build something. So I have this uh, prototype where I have a PVC nozzle, two inch diameter, I have a vibration motor attached to it, and a concrete reservoir, which I'm manually filling with concrete to 3D print. So let's see if it actually works. So at this mixture design, and I was... vibration motor uh, sound that you're hearing. You'll see the specimen was coming out and still holding on to its shape. And that's what the process looks like. And when I'm not vibrating on the top right, you see no material is coming out and I'm able to place multiple layers. And here, even though my experimental protocol with the iCar was 15 minutes, here it's actually just 30 minutes, sorry, 30 seconds before the nozzle comes back to the same spot and it's still has enough yield stress to hold its own shape, both in the longer direction as well as in the horizontal direction. 
Now, not all mixes behave the same way. I'm, I've increased paste very slightly here, and you'll see after about five layers, it's actually failing. Right? Uh, with increased paste, it actually fails. So, looking at literature uh, at early ages, primary reasons for failure are governed by these two uh, formulae. Uh, material failure, the amount of load acting on it, rho gh over rho 3. I know my yield stress. I know gravity. I'm still printing on Earth. They say 3D printing is going to take us to the moon and beyond. G is going to change there. But for now, if I calculate my height is about 6 inches before the material has to fail. Or based off stability, uh, buckling, it's going to be about 10 inches. I've made some conservative estimates here. Uh, but roughly 6 to 10 inches. Each of my layers were 2 inches tall, 5th layer, it failed. Now, all for 3D printing, with this idea, you would want very low slump or no slump, right? Those are typically hard to characterize rheologically. Rheometers can't measure them easily. So how would you go about characterizing the rheology of very stiff mixes? I was thinking... Uh, to do standard tests and then do some regression analysis and see if it fits. So yesterday we celebrated the 100th anniversary of slump and they say 3D printing is the future. Maybe if I can link slump to 3D printing, we'll celebrate 200th anniversary, right? So I have low slumps and I also used the mortar flow table test because you introduce some external uh, energy into this test you drop the table 25 times, so it's kind of somehow related to my vibration. You're uh, inputting an external energy and seeing the change in shape. So I did this a bunch of times for higher slump mixes and did some regression analysis. So if you look at my graph on the left, which has slump versus yield stress, y is equal to some stuff, but at x equals 0, it's saying the yield stress is 4,000 Pascal. On the right, for the drop table, uh, at zero flow, y is nine and a half thousand Pascal, which makes sense, right? You're applying external energy and it's still not deforming. It has a higher yield stress than just the slump. So this is research in progress. I do not have all the answers yet. I have not defined what the uh, rheological limits are, but do a trial mix, see where it fails. You could back calculate yield stress from those formulae or from doing a slump test on a drop table, back calculate to see, basically you could potentially get three yield stress values. Maybe that can help define uh, boundary conditions for what will be, I will be able to 3D print with vibration. So stay tuned for more results, I guess. And that's my research as it progresses. Uh, the conclusions, effect of vibration is immediate and reversible. As aggregate content increases, yield strength increases, vibration could potentially be used to 3D print conventional concrete, and maybe we can establish for a given lab, for a given aggregates, establish some regression ana analysis to see, establish models to predict behavior. Thank you for your time. Uh, that's all from me. Humans are not the only ones who 3D print. Nature has its own way of 3D printing. Maybe we can learn something from out there. Thank you.